Patricia in Sacramento. Hey, Patricia, what's up? Hey, Tom. Uh, the other day I called Senator Boxer's office uh, because she is the chair of the Environmental Committee, mm-hmm. and I had asked them about this, uh, the news articles I've been re- reading about Fukushima, right. and they had referred me to the Nuclear Regulatory Committee. I that's right, that's Commission, the NRC. Yeah, yeah Commission, sorry. And uh, I don't remember the name of the gentleman I spoke to, but I, I told him, I said, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a member of the public, and I just wanted to know I'm concerned about this and how this will affect us, and I asked them, what are you doing to ensure, because this is not just about Japan, you know, this is going to affect everybody. Right. What are you doing to be involved? And basically his response was, it concerned me, Tom, it was almost to the effect that, well, you know, we're not, it's not a, we're, not, we're seeing this as a problem, but because the Pacific Ocean is so vast that this radioactive material would be you know, he made it sound like it would be so minuscule that it would just, it wouldn't even affect us. Right. That this is more of a concern for Japan. This is not a concern for the U.S. or any other surrounding uh, areas. If you're talking and about I, swimming in the water, you know, going to the beach in, in Santa Monica, he's right. The odds of, you know, any significant radioactive contamination making its way all the way across the Pacific intact at high levels are fairly low, and one of the reasons why is that many of these radioactive elements, uh, the, the, the higher isotopes, the heavier ones, sink into the bottom of the sea. And the ones, the middle, middle range ones, the, the cesiums and the tritiums, well, tritium's a very light one, actually. Um, tritium may actually go into the atmosphere. Cesium and things like that, they get eaten. You know, the, the plant matter, the plankton, the all, which is the ocean, is just filled with. I mean, the ocean is just a, a sea of, if you took just a drop of seawater and looked at it under a microscope, you'd see it's filled with life. And all this life in the ocean, they are, are just woofing up these radioactive elements because the radioactive elements mimic other elements. As Kevin pointed out, radioactive cesium, the body thinks that it's potassium. Potassium is essential to every muscle in our body, particularly our heart's and, and so it takes it up as if it was potassium. Um, I'm forgetting the one that, that the body thinks is calcium, but there's another one that the body thinks is calcium, and it takes it up and puts it in, the, in your bones, and, and, and on and on and on. So the plankton, the, the plant matter within, you know, two, three, four, five hundred miles of Japan is heavily contaminated with this stuff. That plant matter then gets eaten by small fish. The small fish get eaten by medium-sized fish. The medium-sized fish get eaten by big fish. The big fish then get eaten by us. That's called bioaccumulation. And so what is happening is that, you know, the, the, the radiation from an area that could be several square miles gets, or cubic miles in the case of the ocean, gets, uh, uh, you know, gets absorbed by the, by the plant matter, which then gets eaten by a whole bunch of fish. But ultimately, you know, one tuna or one large fish could have several miles worth of, of Fukushima, you know, water radiation that started out very dilute. And my concern, and, and, and uh, I guess the NRC is passing the buck on this because they're saying, well, this should be the USDA or something, or maybe the states. But my concern is the food supply. And uh, I went out and bought a, a Geiger counter. When we lived in Germany, uh, we moved there the week after Chernobyl melted down back in 86. And I used to walk through the supermarket with a Geiger counter, and which uh, always embarrassed my wife and got uh, dirty stares from the people in the, in the supermarket. But you'd be walking along, and it would go tick, 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 tick. And then as I passed the mushrooms, it would go brrrr like that because the mushrooms were – because mushrooms just absorb cesium like there's no tomorrow. And – and um, the milk would set it off. I mean, it was pretty amazing. And I have oh, one I? here. And I'd, I've tried to take it out to restaurants before, but Louise won't go with me if I take my Geiger counter. Well, I, I was going to ask you something very quickly, Tom. Do you remember when uh, the first, uh, the incident, uh, several months after Fukushima initially happened, uh, wasn't there a place, I don't know if it was Berkeley or some area where the scientists were uh, studying the levels of radioactive material in the milk? Yeah. Yeah, they were they were they uh, were looking at iodine. Yeah, they were looking at iodine, radioactive iodine, and it was showing up. Um, and iodine, of course, is being transported by the wind and the rain, and because it comes across as a, in a gaseous form, and it has a relatively short half life. But it looks like these things are still emitting this stuff continuously. So, if I lived on the West Coast as you do, I would. There are groups 
of people who are getting together and they're sampling food and they're sampling the air and things like this. And I would find one of those groups. You might want to start at Beyond Nuclear or just ask, ask the folks at beyondnuclear.org who to talk to. And I would also seriously consider investing in a Geiger counter, you know, a fairly sensitive one. They're, they're only two $300. I mean, I realize that's a lot of money for a lot of people, but it's, you know, if it prevents you from getting cancer. Uh, and and going out and checking the food. I think this is much more concerned. And then the other thing I would do is I would be taking um, I, liquid dulse. You can buy at vitaminshop.com this liquid dulse. Dr. Bragg makes it. And it is um, cons- it's iodine. It's iodine from, from, from red seaweed. Dulse is a red seaweed. And if I lived on the West Coast, I, I do take it every day anyway. I have for decades. And just a couple of drops. And that way, it keeps your, your thyroid saturated with iodine. So if you're exposed to radioactive iodine, your body doesn't absorb it. And uh, because the, the, there's a, a fair amount of epidemiological stuff that suggests that the, the wild epidemic of hypo and hyper, but mostly hypothyroidism, among people in their 40s and 50s and 60s in the United States right now, is the reason, because right, Synthroid is the most prescribed drug in America. It's, it's a supplement for the thyroid. And that, that that might be because of the above-ground radioactive tests in the 1940s and 50s um, leading to, you know, contamination of our milk by radioactive iodine. And that that kind of burned up people's thyroids. Make it sense, Patricia? Absolutely. I have hypothyroid, so <laughs> I'm right Bingo. on that. Bingo. So you know what I'm talking about. Okay, Patricia, thank you very much for the call and good luck. And if you learn anything interesting, give us a shot. Let us know.